here today, actually. We, we did a poll, and you're actually the sexiest panelist at Santa Rosa Toy Con 2018. I was going to save it for the end. It's not a surprise. <laughs> There it is. I'm going to hang out with you for a few minutes, warm up, and then uh, I'm going to let it go. He's going to handle it and talk to you guys for a few minutes. I, I'm not wearing socks. It's much cooler that way. Yeah, figure out. That was actually my first question. Yeah, why aren't you wearing socks? How did you know that? <laughs> That's incredible. Well, you never know. You need some, uh, just kick these off. My wife dressed me today. Like she laid it all out on the table for me. She's like, "This is what you're wearing today." I had a Hawaiian shirt picked out. She's like, "I don't think so." It's good to have a good wife that helps you lay out the clothes. She's very important. Anyway, uh, jumping right in. Mm -hmm. Really excited to to have you here in Santa Rosa. Have you ever been out here to the wine country before? I have not. I'm, I'm trying to figure out a way to get my wife up here so we can do a wine tour. Apparently, they're very nice. Yes. Uh, yes. Talk to me about it. I'll set you up. Okay, we'll do. Yeah. She doesn't really drink that much. She'll have like maybe a half a glass with dinner, um, but that leaves more for me. <laughs> which is, but uh, it, it's food. Wine is food. So I, I appreciate this is this is very much part of the bread basket of America too. You know, uh, you know, you have wine and uh, good produce, and uh, I really am. Uh, Honored to be here. I know, I know you had uh, some hard times last year, and uh, the resilience of this community is really something. When we were, when I was flying, when I was flying in, I was amazed to see how, you know, quickly things came came back. And uh, you know, I, I I don't I'm not that familiar with it, but the people that I've talked to, uh, it, it it is warms my heart that you guys were able to uh, you know stand tall. And you know, nature's tough sometimes. So you know, this is definitely question, resilience question right here. Everybody in this room was touched by that event. Yeah. It's, it was an incredible 10 days to, to be sitting here today with all of you. is yeah. fantastic. Yeah. So well, let's talk movies. It's more fun. Uh, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you handle it from here, and then oh, I'll okay, do the bye. Yeah, I'm going to do You're the Q&A. You're just going to go? Do you want to talk? I know yeah, no, we can do whatever you want. You want to stay up here with you me? Or you, wanna, if you, want you, can stay. Know, you can hang. You can hang. I feel overdressed. Anybody? Oh, yeah. The sun's beating down on your neck now, too. It's fine. <laughs> uh, do we have, do you want to do a Q and A, or do you want me to just? I don't really do song and dance. I, I probably sort of ramble in stories and stuff about things that I've done and people I've met. And uh, I got a bunch of questions for you. I could start with. Okay, yeah. You so go first. the thing I like to start with kind of the beginnings of why. Why did you decide to be this incredible actor, and what drove you to getting that first job in 1980? Like when you got that first credit, what was what was the goal? It was density. I it mean, was density. dead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, How did you end up sitting here with us today? Yeah, I was um, kind of a misfit in high school. My parents divorced. My parents divorced when I was uh, 10, 11, and uh, I was a hockey player, but I wasn't able to go and play hockey anymore with the guys that I played. Yeah, you're up, but I wasn't. Ooh, slide the left. The one hockey. Uh, <laughs> He's here. He <laughs> the. Uh, couldn't compete with the guys that I was playing against anymore because their parents were sending them off to hockey camp in Canada and because of the divorce we couldn't do that. So um, I was no longer in the, uh, the athlete world in, in school and you kind of got to find a social group and where do the misfits go? I became a misfit. Where do the misfits go? They go to drama class. <laughs> and drama class is great because it, it's so welcoming for, you know, there's a lot of talk about diversity. The, the drama class has diversity. It's got, you know, tall, short, wide, thin, straight, gay, black, white, everything. It's got everything. And everyone's trying to make everyone else laugh. And that's what's funny. Plus, you know, they're pretty girls. You know, <laughs> who could sing? <laughs> that's why that's why I had so much fun uh, doing that and uh, it was really welcoming community uh, you know I felt myself kind of down and a loser but we did some plays and it built their self-esteem up you get up in front of people uh, in the audience and you hopefully make them laugh hopefully make them cry a little bit or uh, throw tomatoes <laughs> in my case. so that's how I got into acting per se. I mean, my I have two older brothers. We used to pretend to be the Three Stooges, so that, that sort of happened when I was young. And, uh, I think... Uh, 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 oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. I was the I was the youngest, so I took the most punishment, of course. <laughs> were they all as large as you, though? They were always bigger than I am. Oh, Not man. anymore, but they were. I mean, yeah. but they they were tough guys, and they were my older brothers. It was a good thing about you know having older brothers in a community, although they were four or five years ahead of me. So every time I was going into a school, they were leaving the school. So I had to fend for myself a lot. I'm um, not a big fan of bullying, uh, so I did a movie called My Bodyguard, which was my first movie, and that's, uh, thank you, near and dear to my heart in Chicago, and uh, it's about bullying in high school, and if there's some young folks out there, uh, you know, you guys would like it, I think it's a, it's a fun show about friendship and, uh, you know, not, and, and standing up to bullies. Uh, there's a time and a place, obviously, and there's, uh, it's changed a bit, I don't know if, you could solve it so much in a, if you did a remake the way we did with some fist fights, but <laughs> you know. Uh, so that was that was my first movie. I was in high school and I just auditioned for it, and got that, and uh, then I did uh, Ordinary People, where I played kind of a jerk, and, um, and then I have sort of mile markers along the way: a Full Metal Jacket, uh, DC Cab. There's some connective tissue, and then there's Independence Day and X Files, and then uh, uh, Firefly Serenity. Uh, that small show. And that that little show. That little show yeah. that could. Yeah. Or, or couldn't. It's like, it, it, I think you're the only one that's still working from that. You know, they're all. No, no, Nathan. No, Nathan, Nathan Nathan's yeah. doing okay. Nathan's, Nathan's made, a, made a good name for he's himself. Did, he's done a couple of things since then. I loved, I loved your guest spot on Castle. That was incredible. I remember yes. Nathan. Uh, I don't know if you saw the, a couple episodes I did at Castle. I played the character named Ethan Slaughter. He's sort of a rogue cop. And, and uh, when they were getting ready to do it, Nathan texted me. He said, "Hey, can you do a role, kind of Jane Cobb, kind of Dirty Harry?" <laughs> <laughs> I think I can handle that. <laughs> so, so I, I signed on right away. That was, that was just great fun. He's such a great leader uh, on the set and as an actor and as a friend. And he's funny and he's prepared and he's ready to roll with uh, you know whatever comes. And so we, we had a, we had a blast on Castle. Was that a good reunion of kind of coming back to somebody you'd worked with for you know over the course of years, but now kind of having that reunion on camera on TV again? How did that feel? What what was that like? Did you did you guys know how that was going to play? Did you know what kind of reception that was going to get? Yeah, it was like you know putting on an old pair of underwear. You know, it's like the same. <laughs> <laughs> well, that probably uh, it's maybe, a really good uh, analogy maybe a for Nathan. Com I guess. Comfortable old, old T-shirt, I guess. <laughs> yeah. uh, sorry, Nate. Uh, <laughs> this is live streaming, so he's going to see this. Uh, no, we uh, <laughs> yeah, we just you know we're friends, so you work as friends and. Uh, try to make each other laugh and keep each other on point and um, it was kind of a role reversal too. I get to pick on him a little bit whereas he picked on me in Firefly so it was <laughs> some uh, good uh, vengeance. Yes. <laughs> I've, I've noticed throughout your career you've, you've played a lot of very strong characters. More fatherly about your your work I feel like. I, I, I noticed especially in like The Last Ship, um, you're the father of that ship. You're the, you're the guy everybody looks to for the advice calling me old, isn't it? No! Oh. There's a lot of young fathers in this room, but it, and I'm sure over the, the course of the years, you know, going from the iconic Jane Cobb to Slattery, yeah. you know, it's, it's a jump, it's a shift, and it's cool to see that, that range for you, but can you give us a, a background on how you progressed from Jane to here? Like, what was the shift? What, what took place? Just different casting? You want, you want to hear my knee click? Is that what you want? Yes! <laughs> ah. Is it the shrapnel from the... No, it's stumbling and tumbling and falling and fighting and <laughs> stuff like that and blowing stuff up. Uh, that sounds like fun. Uh, it, it's an accumulation of damage, I think. It um, makes you fatherly. That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, I have three kids. That beat me up, too. Uh, they're all grown now. We're empty nesting. But it, it is kind of a progression. The funny thing about uh, Firefly, uh, when we shot it in 2002, TV Guide did a little photo shoot for us. And uh, I took a nice picture, and they put it up. Uh, that it, it looked nicer than I thought I was, but they, they sent it out to their readership and said, vote for Sexiest Newcomer. I won Sexiest Newcomer at age 40. <laughs> you're winning here today, actually. We, we did a poll, and you're actually the sexiest panelist at Santa Rosa ToyCon 2018. I was going to save it for the end. <laughs> 
not a surprise. <laughs> you didn't know what you were getting into. When you so get anyway, it. but Firefly was 2002, and Slattery started. I like, was 18, so five years ago, uh, yeah. 13. So you know, a couple, a couple, few years later than that. Uh, there's a lot of change that goes on in your body from age 40 to age 50, especially, and then. I guess from 50 to 56, where I am now. See all these nodding heads? Um, <laughs> it's going to happen to you, too. It's going to happen to all of you. You're going to need reading glasses. You're just going to need them. Um, especially if you keep staring at those little screens, man. Oh, my daughter. Okay. She texted texted me. When are you coming home? Um, never. never. <laughs> we'll keep you. We have a lot of work here. We're always filming things here in Sonoma County. Big things happening up here. Well, we used to go up to uh, Tahoe, which is mm, hop, skip, and a jump from here. We drove up from L.A. Uh, my mother-in-law lived up there, and we would take the kids up skiing twice a year, and we'd take them up for summer camp. Uh, so we got to drive through <laughs> some of this region a bit, and uh, so... My, my wife was born and raised in Northern California, and so we're very, very lucky to uh, have that, had that experience as well, because it gets kind of smoggy and hot down south. <laughs> it's beautiful up here, you know. So as you've moved into, you know, different roles, uh, looking back, is there anything you can say, that was it, that was, I loved that, that, I would love to do that again, I would love to see that, I would love to put that character on again and try it out again. Well, certainly Jane Cobb, because he just... <laughs> Somebody filmed that, right? Yeah, just because it, it didn't... None of us in that show got the chance to complete the arc. And uh, it was cut off uh, before it was time. So romantically speaking, I think that's the one I would like to revisit, just to close that arc, whereas, you know, Slattery on the last ship is five years uh, we've kind of we're, we're, we're able to write for the closure as, as as well as Chuck write for the closure, and so that that's important too. Um, you know, I, like I said, I have some mile marker like Full Metal Jacket. That was great. That was nine months with Stanley Kubrick. That was really cool. Uh, I think I'm the only living actor to have worked with both Stanley Kubrick and Joss Whedon. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a trivia question. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Put that down somewhere. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I just it's it's a blessing. I, I feel uh, lucky that I was able to trick both of those uh, <laughs> geniuses. <laughs> I, I, and now here's I guess the question that is born from that answer is: Is there a future for Jane? Can he come back? Is there is there any possibility of seeing Jane Cobb again on screen? I don't know. Think so. I. I I think that Joss said it best when we were at uh, the 10th reunion of, uh, or 10th anniversary celebration of uh, Firefly at Comic Con 2012. And he said, yeah, you know, it's risky to revisit it. It just kind of sits there. It's beautiful. It's mm -hmm. kind of perfect in its imperfection and short life. To try it again and not achieve the beauty that it is would be a letdown, so it's kind of nice just to have it sit there and be beautiful. And no, I agree. No, no, no. I, I no. just want to see if there was a chance. You two, know what I mean? Two, two down, seven to go. <laughs> yeah. um, but I don't know. They're reboots all the time, but that's above my pay grade. That's a Joss Whedon and a, a 20th Century Fox Universal choice. So what's uh, what's coming up? Uh, it looks like you have a new movie coming out, a western. Uh, I worked on a show called The Kid, directed by Vince D'Onofrio, which is a callback to uh, Full Metal Jacket. He's, he's directing many things now. Uh, that's a cool western. And then a small movie, beautiful little story, The Legend of Five Mile Cave, which is uh, a story of a man who's wrongly accused, goes to prison, and has to uh, prove himself innocent through uh, some sort of redemptions and rekindling of uh, the family structure. So it's, it's a sweet, sweet movie. I don't know when that's coming out. And then we did some Gunny Time, which was uh, Lee Ermey. He, he tragically passed away. For those of you who don't know who Lee Ermey is, he was the drill instructor in Full Metal Jacket, the Gunny. And he passed away tragically and suddenly um, went in for a minor back surgery, picked up pneumonia, and it killed him. 
and he was just gearing up to do his uh, his show Gunny Time on uh, the Outdoor Channel, and uh, so they asked us. One of his dying wishes was, uh, God, it must suck to know you're just there, man. Anyway, so he said, my dying wish is that we we get that last ep uh, season done. So myself and uh, Randy Couture and uh, yeah. We, we uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we, we went out and uh, we, we blew some stuff up in the Arizona desert. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anything, so. anything really big? Uh, well, we had a Barrett 50 cal sniper rifle. That was pretty, pretty pow pow. And, uh, you shot all these weapons? You, you worked with these guys? Well, I, I just a few. We didn't have, we didn't have do we get to watch you blowing stuff yeah, up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we didn't cool. have a tank or anything. So that, well, that's, that's kind of what I've been up to. Right on. And then, you know, just hanging out with my, my wife. We have an old dog who's very sick. He's old. He's like 16 years old, and he's barely able to get up, but he can still get up and walk around walk around the block and pee and poo. And he eats a little bit, but he's in pain, and so uh, that we're sort of nursing him. That's why my wife's not along. We got, I mm. had to leave her behind to take care of that old buddy. Buddy. His name is Buddy. Send your prayers to Buddy. Yeah. 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 Um, he's, had a good, he's had a good long life. He's had fun. What kind of dog? He's a mutt. He's, a mutt. he's like he's a Britney Spaniel black and white shaggy dog mutt. I just got my first puppy. I got a nine month old blue healer. Yeah. It's crazy. I'll never have kids now. And you know for sure if you're cut out to be a dad or not. You're like, I got to get up every two hours and take this dog out. I'm totally down for that. But if it was a child, I would. Oh, that poor child. Well, you don't know. I don't know. No, no, no. Don't you have a wife? She's going to be in charge of a lot of that shit. She might, she might have something to say I about that. I think you're probably right. <laughs> That's probably why she's dressing before, me like this. She's you, yeah, preparing before, me for adulthood. You, you should probably ask her before you start <laughs> well, you know, making declarative she statements the puppy. to the crowd. She get the puppy. Oh, they all know. We've oh, talked earlier. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, but speaking of the crowd, uh, I would love to open it up for some questions from them if you're okay. Absolutely not. Let's not do that. <laughs> has completely gone through. Now, with that being said, 20th Century Fox... Maybe Disney would be able to pick up Firefly and resurrect it. Has that been talked about in any capacity? I don't know. No? Again, above my pay grade. Fair enough. <laughs> All right, well, who do, you, who do you have for Conor McGregor versus Khabib Nurmagomedov then? Ooh. <laughs> that's a real question. That's, that's the one we all want to know the answer to. Khabib. How? Second round. Second round? Yeah. Submission? No. TKO? Yeah. Don't don't gamble on my advice. Though. <laughs> You're gonna, you'll lose. <laughs> I'm just guessing, but I could be right. <laughs> you can't win if you don't play. I'm sorry. Um, I was just wondering if you could talk about Vera, your gun from Firefly, and uh, I know it wasn't in Serenity, but it became, it's kind of like your it's like your lightsaber almost now with all the like the action yeah. figures and stuff. So. Yeah. Can you talk about like the, your experience with that and like what happened to it and the Callahan full bore auto lock? Yeah. <laughs> Double thorough gate, whatever the heck, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Joss jo 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 was so Joss was so funny. He was like, I don't know. It sounds gunny. <laughs> I was like, it sounds science -y. Did you keep it? Do you still have it? No, no. It would, they, it was, they wanted $10,000 for it. Oh, wow. And I thought just for a little shotgun, I didn't, you know, with some pieces and parts, I wasn't going to. You had like a modified G36 in the movie, right? Yeah, it's a Sega shotgun, I think. Yeah. yeah. With some yeah. tricked out uh, triggers and stuff on it. Thank God it for was, a good props department. It was heavy. That thing was oh, <laughs> front heavy. You know, my friend Tony the Seal would say, just get stronger. Eat <laughs> <laughs> your spinach. What's your name? Hi, my name is Mark. Hi. And uh, I was wondering if you had your druthers, uh, if there was any role that you could say, that is the role that I want to play, um, which one would you take? More specific? Like, uh, if you had a million dollars of your own to make a movie... <laughs> be a cheap movie. <laughs> <laughs> you have $50 million of your own money to make a movie. What role would you choose? How much money would that would I get to keep? Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, to, uh, gosh, I don't know. Um, your dream role? I guess just a dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With a dark secret. <laughs> And a dungeon. <laughs> I don't 
I don't know. I, I, I take them as they come along. Like, ooh, that would be fun. But I can't think of one right now. Like, not Shakespeare? <laughs> <laughs> not that guy. Did you, were you in the Joss Whedon? No, of? no. Uh, he messed up there. Well, he knows I can't do I am but temper, temper, <laughs> man. Temp, 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 uh, Lori Wilson. Hi. Hi, Lori. I, I was just wondering, can you talk about what it was like being on the set of Independence Day, what it was like working on that movie? I mean, it's exciting. Mm. Every time my husband sees you point the gun at that alien, he mm -hmm. says, is it bulletproof? And you go, no, no, sir. And you start shooting. He gets all excited. He's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> so is your husband here right now? He is, but he's, he's, oh, yeah, I'm embarrassing you. What's his name? What's his name? Like, What's his name? Tyler. Tyler, raise your hand. There he is. That scene was supposed to end after we blast the alien. Then they go off running and do some of the stuff. I asked the producer and director, could I possibly um, do what Major Mitchell, I believe, would do and, and uh, administer the coup de grace? <laughs> and uh, the director and the producer said, yeah, that's a good idea. We're going to go shoot the big movie. You take second unit and shoot that. So we did. We stuck around and um, we wandered in and I was able to, you know, blast the alien in, in the forehead, you know, which was great because he choked up my dear friend, Brent Spider. <laughs> Poor Brent. Yeah. Superhero. It was just so exciting. I was young. <laughs> His knee place. I'm Rebecca. He Hi, Rebecca. This. Good to see you again with a K A R E B E K A H. Hey, he knows. <laughs> yeah, I know. My question is um, with uh, Serenity Firefly, movie or show, is there anything that you think you could have personally changed that it would have it would have ended better in your opinion or different, but more in depth? Like they went more into it just because you added something. Like I know that's not your job because your job's that. <laughs> but if you could change anything. Uh, in the pilot episode of Firefly, there was one moment where we're interrogating. Uh, you know, the, I forget his name. Uh, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> we were waiting for that question. Yeah, I just wanted to get a little more intimate with him in my knife. <laughs> And, uh, but, you know, <laughs> they, wouldn't let me, they, they wouldn't let me do that. The other thing is, I think, had we had a chance, I think we, we could have developed the, um, the Reavers into a little, more, a little more personality, but there just really wasn't time to develop, like, to have a con character of some kind. Or What's the... Uh, in, Gal in Galaxy Quest, who's the... Who's, who's the, the yeah. Yeah. yeah, but Galaxy like, Quest. Who's yeah, Galaxy, Galaxy Quest, the big evil green guy. Zorg. Or yeah, yeah, Zorg. <laughs> Be great to have a, like I know a it's Zorg, a different movie, Zorg everybody. Zorg Don't look at me like that. <laughs> yeah, but you ask <laughs> fantasy. This is my fantasy. Yeah. But otherwise, it's perfect. <laughs> did you have? Did you have something that you would have liked? Would yeah. What would you have changed? Shepard shouldn't have died. <laughs> Glass. <laughs> what a performance by Ron Glass. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, rest in peace, Ron Glass. What a beautiful man. We, uh, Nathan and I and Jewel and uh, Sean went to his service and it was, he was a Buddhist and they had, uh, they have a Buddhist temple up there in, in Los Angeles and it, it was, uh, it just had this electric field. It was full and it was so beautiful and sweet, and the, and the, the chant, you could just feel his, his energy and his presence there as he was floating away or hovering over us or whatever you believe. Uh, just We all felt his presence there, and, the, and basically the, his love uh, filled the room. And, uh, and, then, and then the sun broke through the, the window right, at, right as it was. Yeah. yeah, he was a beautiful man. And... Um, but I'm still here. Yay. Thank you. Don't leave. <laughs> we all we all do, brother. Yeah, Eventually, we're all gonna go. Yeah. What's your name? Uh, my name's Matt. 
Hi, Matt. Uh, Let's cheer this up, please. Sure. So, given your extensive career in, in film and theater, is there a prop that you have that you've taken from a set of a movie that you've been on, or one that you wish that you had taken? That's like a memento of a of a particularly fond experience that you had on set. Or on camera. You see that knife on that guy's belt? <laughs> You have, you have James Knight. Do you just take it out sometimes and like throw it around, just like throw it in a wall just to see? How do you think his knee clicks? Like that's ah, knife on the knees. I should have it scoped. I really should. <laughs> no, but a couple people have like hit me up on on Twitter, which is a stupid platform. <laughs> that gets the biggest applause. But 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 they've sent me pictures of uh, look I got Jane's knife. I'm like there you go. no you don't. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll send them and I'll send them a picture of mine. That that's it. Um, now that's a knife. Yeah that's a knife. <laughs> I'd say that one. I have a couple of uh, really cool mugs from uh, the last ship that the prop department gave me. Um, some t-shirts and things. But I'd say the thing that, that, that I uh, collected from Firefly was each uh, screenplay, uh, each teleplay for every episode, uh, fully up to date with all the revisions that come in, collated, and then signed by the whole cast, Joss and uh, Tim Minear, and the writer of whatever episode it was. And we auctioned those off for charity. And uh, Gosh, well, the Marine Corps Law Enforcement Foundation got about sixty grand. Uh, out of gas, went for five thousand wow. uh, dollars. Wow! Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's cool. Is there one that you wish that you had taken? Oh, uh, you know, it would be nice to have Vera, but. <laughs> from, from your entire career. Oh, from from all of the movies that you've done, all of the time. I had the jacket I wore in, in my bodyguard. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I did, I did a little cameo role in uh, a movie called Drill Bit Taylor. They asked me to come in. I don't know if any of you saw it, but it's about these kids in high school who are interviewing for um, bodyguards, basically. And uh, I was one of the bodyguards that came in. They said, well, you know, we're not sure we want you to wear that jacket. I said, there's no point in me doing it if, I'm not, if I don't get to wear that stupid, dirty T-shirt and that old green jacket. So I, I was able to convince them to let, <laughs> let me do that. Oh, he's leaving. Uh, you can wear what you want. Yeah. It's nice to have that kind of power. <laughs> the power of no. Come on over. What's your name? Uh, Sam. Hi, Sam. Nice to meet you. You too. Nice hat. Thank you. <laughs> um, so I had heard on the set of Firefly, you guys played uh, like Halo in between shoots. Is that true? or? I observed them mostly. Uh, Nathan and, uh, and uh, Alan were very good gamers. I'm, I'm just not that adept, I mean, with uh, a rifle. If they were controllers with a rifle, I'm pretty good. But the thing is, with this... Oh. No, why am I aiming at the floor? No. I'm not aiming at the sky. There, there's a few other people here that game that Screw way. Screw it, <laughs> Too much practice. <laughs> subject moving on. <laughs> I don't even know what it is. <laughs> but you do a, a lot of voice acting. Sometimes. You do a lot. Of, I mean, we, you have a lot of credits for voice acting. You did some video games. Mm -hmm. you, you're uh, you're in the Halo series, correct? Mm -hmm. And what's your character? Dutch. Dutch. Thank you. Yeah. I, mean, I was racking around in there somewhere. What's your name? I'm Carl. Hi, Carl. I've got a question about Stanley Kubrick. Yeah. Um, I know he was kind of a notoriously. Uh, hard director to work with, uh, especially now that he's dead. But, um, yeah, what would he be doing if you were alive right now? That was the best joke of the day. That was super Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, my question is, I, I know, I mean, there's stories about him reducing actors to tears, things like that. What were your experiences with him like? Well, he picked on all of us equally, I believe, when we all deserved it. Uh, we were just a bunch of young punks in his eye uh, trying to pretend to be Marines and uh, when our uh, <laughs> his favorite thing 
There's a couple of books about it, and, and if you can get Matthew Modine's Full Metal Jacket Diary and read that, it's very accurate. He was keeping notes as we went along, and he put it into a book called Full Metal Jacket Diary by Matthew Modine. Uh, plug. And <laughs> he talks about how there was... Well, it's a mixed company, I can't really say. But he does uh, grind us into the dirt, if you will, uh, at times emotionally. Which is, you know, it sounds like a sort of a wimpy complaint, and it is, but at the time you're scared to death of this guy because he's a powerful filmmaker and you want to do well and, and work again. <laughs> yeah. There were some people who were fired off that show because they just weren't acting good enough. You know, act better, is what he would say. And, you know, you'd get 50 takes to act better, and if you didn't, well, it's too bad you're going to die in that courtyard now. <laughs> One of the actors was forced to lay in the dirt for two weeks, just covered in blood, and it was London and winter, and I don't know if you've ever had movie blood on you. It's not pleasant. It's sticky and cold and gross. You know, it's messy. But, you know, again, yeah, he was mean. <laughs> but, he could be, but he could be lovely, you know. He was just, he just wanted you to be better. He wanted the movie to be perfect. And, you know, um, Obviously, we're not. We're people. And, uh, but he pushed us. I think that was good. I think we he got good performances from most of us. Uh, uh, yeah. Did you did you take a break after that, or did you jump into another project what right did away? Do after that, uh, was that like an experience you needed to go? I don't know about this for a minute. 85, 85, 86 came back. It was released in eighty seven. Um, I met my wife, got married, and had my first kid. So, yeah, that's what I did. Yeah, that definitely rocked you. That was an experience. <laughs> Questions? Any more people? Come on up, please. U.S. Navy? Former. Uh, happy to have served. Barry? How would you like uh, filming with U.S. Navy for five years? It was an honor. It was one of the greatest honors of my life to be aboard uh, the USS Nathan James uh, we were able to go over the horizon on a couple of embarkations. Uh, I was able to participate in uh, Fleet Week um, aboard the uh, no New York. Uh, yeah, they flew they flew us out on uh, Seahawk to uh, the USS to the Oak Hill to the Oak Hill. It's a a large amphibious uh, craft that has LCS L L L S. The LSD, or LSD. yeah, it was an LSD, I think. It, it's the one with the big well deck and the two uh, marine hovercrafts in the in the in the well. That's it. There's so many uh, abbreviations. That acronyms. So, funniest thing is we're we're cruising up into New York Harbor, and the USS Cole was alongside of us and the crew, and we all stood and, and rendered honors to the coal. Uh, and uh, the, the captain, he, uh, he he had them at parade rest for about two and a half hours. <laughs> yeah. Um, there was some grumbling. Some, some <laughs> cramping. <laughs> so, yeah. But I mean, we cruised, we cruised past uh, the Freedom Tower and rendered honors there, and uh, the Blue Angels did a flyby, and it was awesome. But I, I would say that the most humbling thing for me to be amongst, and I wear a costume on this show, I understand the difference between a costume and a uniform. Uh, to see my, my medals are all not quite perfectly accurate, which I think is good for the Navy nitpickers who can look and go, that's not quite right. Though <sighs> one of the most accurate portrayals of life in the Navy and the U.S. Navy yeah. that I've ever seen. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great. But the humbling thing is how young uh, the men and women are that, that run those platforms of war. Yeah, yeah, and uh, the the uh, honor, courage, and commitment is something that uh, my dad was in the Naval Air Corps at the end of World War II, uh, so I, I appreciate that. I didn't get a chance to serve, but I tried to uh, I try to be as much of a what did you call me fatherly fatherly your your father yeah. Fatherly. We look up to you. Slattery I'm trying fatherly. to be. 
Literally, yes. <laughs> he is very tall. That was the shocking part when I got here this morning, and, and you know, seeing you on screen for so many years, and then now to come up to talk to you, I was like, and he's very large. <laughs> But a treat. You didn't think he was short, right? I didn't know, but I'm short, so I got me nervous. You're not that short. I'm just... <laughs> Thank you, Matt. Appreciate that. It's good to see you, Matthew. Anyway, the U.S. Navy was kind to us, and they allowed us access to their base in San Diego, and they allowed us access to their crew and, and their captains, and uh, I got to smoke some cigars out over the horizon at night <laughs> on the uh, smoke deck several times. So that was that was great. Oh, What's your name? My name's Daryl. I'm Darryl. also uh, former Navy. I got retired in '95, so. What rank? Uh, E6. Okay, so I don't have to call you sir. No, no don't call me sir. I work for a living. Right, got it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who's been your favorite character, not other than the one, like the ones you portray, that you've actually acted alongside, or well, the actual character? Who's been your favorite character on anything that you've ever been on? Uh, it's probably a toss-up between Nathan Fillion uh, as Captain. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Uh, Captain Mal Reynolds. Mal, Captain Mal Reynolds. Say that three times fast. <laughs> and uh, Zach Levi on Chuck. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't talked a lot about Chuck. What can you s speak a little bit on your experience in that? I mean, that's a, a really interesting show, and you were one of the funniest people to watch yeah. work on that. <laughs> Yeah, I got to be funny as a sort of a sniper and a killer. Uh, I took I took from that my my current and probably endearing enduring ethos is sniper funny. <laughs> Sit in the back, wait for the wait for the the killer line, and uh, and take the shot. <laughs> take the shot, Chuck. Do it. Um, that was uh, a labor of love and. Uh, Yvonne Strahovski is a beautiful, funny woman. Uh, her character portrayed on camera is completely nothing like what she is in real life. I've explained this to other people, they, they can't believe it. But she's very much like, uh, in, in my opinion, uh, a, a young Carol Burnett. She's hilariously funny and bawdy and just great to work with, um, energetic and fun. Um, so, yeah, those, those things like that. Chuck was... Uh, it was silly. It was silly. It was wild. It was fun. It was uh, green. Yeah, I remember too short, green. I heard somebody say it. Buy more. You know, everything was green and buy more. So, you've worked in a lot of ensembles over the years. Is there an ensemble that you'd like to that you visit with often? Do you still keep friends with a lot of people? You you said you're still good friends with Nathan. Do you do you still keep in touch with your Chuck family? Do you still keep in Chuck ch Chuck with your uh, keep in touch with your? I, your could, show, I could I could show you a couple of text chains sent out from Zach and Yvonne and the rest of us that are included, but they're mm, yeah they're they're um, bawdy. They're busy people. <laughs> I think what? that's I think that's a good word for they're it. What? Bawdy. Oh. Yes. <laughs> What's your name, Look sir? it up. Well, my name's Chuck. <laughs> we, got, we got Chuck right here? Yeah, my name's Chuck. My name's hey, Chuck. I was just going to ask you about Chuck, but you beat me to it. Oh, so Did Chuck, you have a specific right. question about Chuck, or just no, sort of just a generic? I was just going to ask you if there's any stories you might want to relay, or because, you know. That was another one of those. We haven't really touched on Chuck until just now. It was another one of those shows that we were, it was a miracle we got picked up. Uh, the, the, uh, we filmed, we filmed the pilot, and. We weren't sure we were even going to get picked up to series, and uh, they fixed it somehow. So it was, it was one of those miracles. A miracle if anything even gets bought as a script, let alone produced and then picked up and then get a full season. But our first season was cut off due to the writer's strike. We lost the back nine, which may have been a blessing in disguise because then, because uh, we were a relatively inexpensive show to produce, the other shows that went by the wayside were too expensive, so we got to we got to keep going into season two, and that carried us forward. And then, you know, Subway came along; they liked us, and the the studio liked us. Warner Brothers liked us. It was Warner Brothers for NBC. So, but the people were fun, and they were funny, and they got we got to do you know actiony comedy. You know, it was great and green. <laughs> I've been given ha several hats over time amongst other things, and uh, when I come back from conventions, my wife's like, okay, what do you got? 
<laughs> is there anything that you've gotten from a convention that's um, still in my garage? Yeah, it's still in your yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you're like, oh my god, this is incredible. You're hanging on your wall. You're like, what is? Where did this come from? Piece of art, anything like that that's come to you? I do have. Well, one of my favorite items is uh, from a woman, uh, a late woman named Susan Toom, actually T O M B, and she made this. Uh, it's a beautiful sort of lithograph with each of our characters' faces and about three or four different of our catchphrases all, all in and amongst. And uh, it's sort of in the color tone of Firefly, so sort of dark browns and sort of gold yellows and stuff like that. Yeah, so I kept that one on the wall. Thank you. What's your name? I'm Joseph. Joseph, nice mm -hmm. to meet you. I have a question. What were some of your favorite memories of filming Firefly? Right. Um, the pilot episode was great because we were just getting to know the characters and we were getting to know the ship. Uh, uh, Joss said, get to know this ship, you're going to live in it for a few years. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Which was the beautiful thing about when Serenity was up and running because we got to go to Universal in their biggest soundstage and see it recreated, you know, the new and improved uh, Serenity. Uh, Firefly class ship, and we got to run around that set. And, uh, just Joss going, God, you gotta see this guy. Come on, come on. <laughs> <laughs> the walking tour. What's your name? My name is Tara. Hi, Tara. Um, the first time I heard your voice, you did the future Timmy Trial, right? The which one? The future Timmy Trial for the Farrah Parents um, Trial Chase Kuchos. I don't know. I don't remember that one. Future Timmy Turner. I don't know cartoons. He knows them. I don't know them. I don't think I did. No, I think you have me. Ah, uh, different, different guy, but close. No, that's okay. Do you want to ask this gentleman, Adam Baldwin, a question about anything? Yeah. Go for it. Okay. Um, can you do that voice where says? I'm, I think we're getting the actors confused, but uh, <laughs> thank you for your question. Uh, last questions, everybody. Anybody got one last question, two last questions, and then we're going to wrap it up. Come over here. Come over here. Bring your question to the microphone. The gentleman who brought the water. What's your name? Caesar. Thank you, Caesar. In preparation for Full Metal Jacket, did you go through any like boot camp style training or anything, or live fire drills? They didn't let us, well, we did some live firing on Stanley's uh, property out back. He liked to go blow stuff up, and he could, he could get away with it because he had a big estate. You could, apparently, you could do it on private property. Uh, but there wasn't too much live firing because England was pretty, we shot it in London, England. They had it pretty locked down. Um, we spent some time manipulating the weapon. Mine was the M60. You just familiarize yourself with that. And, uh, but as far as the boot camp stuff, I, I didn't go through the boot camp section because I was already tough. And I didn't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's just a terrible thing to say. Um, you got to get you doing 13 weeks. We'll get you oh, a race. You'll be fine. In retrospect, I wish I had. I wish I'd spent some time, and there was there would have been some way for Stanley's. You know, if I'd have been more, if I'd have been a better man back then. I just was not. I was just, just, <laughs> just such a dummy. But I would have said, put me in the back and let me be one of the extras and run around with you guys and, and get in good shape. But I was in pretty good shape already. But it, obviously those guys got really in top because they made them do so many push-ups. <laughs> oh, man. Those guys really did. Uh, so, no, I didn't do the, the training that the other guys did. All right, one more question, two more questions. Come on over. So My name is Steve. Nice so, I grew up on Long Island. Yes, sir. And there's a Baldwin Long Island. Yes, sir. And there's a Baldwin High School. Yes, sir. And there was a teacher there who was the uh, high school's auditorium is named after Baldwin. Yes, sir. Is this all connected to you and your family? No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you're, the, you're the Illinois Baldwins, right? Yeah, I'm the Chicago Baldwin. I'm the Chicago clan. The other one's, the other one's <laughs> like the, the, the Alec, Billy, Daniel, Stephen. Uh, they're, they're, the they're long, yeah, they're the East Coasters. We don't talk about that. <laughs> Thank you. Very talented. I mean, those people are very, very talented. Very funny. Hello, sir. What's your name? Jim. Hey, Jim. So, if you had your choice 
of any type of project to move on to next, what would you do? Would you go into uh, uh, historical type film, uh, something along uh, the Gunnies uh, reality type stuff, or uh, serious TV? It would be fun to do uh, the Gunny Time type of show. You know, you get to meet all sorts of weapons experts and you get to yeah, blow stuff up, which can be fun out in the Arizona desert, not here in the uh, San Francisco, greater San Francisco area. Nowhere near the state of California. No, we yeah, pretty much on the other side of the border and you can do it. Uh, <laughs> out, there, the out there in free America. Uh, <laughs> but I digress. For those of you not clapping, it's okay. Oh, come on, you know Adam Baldwin likes guns. <laughs> um, so that would be fun. Also, uh, you know who has a, like the greatest job right now for a guy who's in his 50s or 60s is Ed O'Neill. <laughs> <laughs> you know, work two or three days a week on a sitcom, like a one-camera sitcom, that would be great. Play a grumpy old dad or something. <laughs> who, has, uh, who, has, who has dark secrets and guns, <laughs> but a gun safe. Uh, uh. I'm writing you a TV pilot now. Yeah. You're going to be a grumpy old man pilot. Gunny dead. Eddie Murphy's going to be your play, though. It's going to be great. All right, last question. If you ever want to go to the range, Redneck Night on Twitter. Yes, sir. Sorry. Redneck Night on Twitter. They got a whole thing for you. Following. Last question, quickly. Okay. <laughs> I, I just wanted you to end with uh, one of your catchphrases yeah. by telling us where you're going to be. <sighs> <laughs> Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video. Twin Opinion cares about your opinion, and your participation keeps us alive. So share your comments, hit that like button, and subscribe to the channel. You can also find Twin Opinion on Facebook or visit our website at asamiero.com.